Okay, this is for Father's Day 2014. George W. Peck was governor of Wisconsin sometime in the 1890s. In 1883, he was a newspaper man, and he wrote humorous columns about uh, a character called the Bad Boy, who was always praying, playing practical jokes on his father. There's a collection out there, Peck's Bad Boy and His Pa. This is the very first story in that series. Won't take very long, but uh, I don't think the governor of Wisconsin today would be reading, let alone writing, stories like this. The Boy with a Lame Back A young fellow who was pretty smart on general principles and who was always in good humor went into a store the other morning limping and seemed to be broken up generally. The proprietor asked him if he wouldn't sit down, and he said he couldn't very well, as his back was lame. He seemed discouraged, and the proprietor asked him what was the matter. Well, says he, as he put his hand on his pistol pocket and groaned, there is no encouragement for a boy to have any fun nowadays. If a boy tries to play an innocent joke, he gets kicked all over the house. The storekeeper asked him what had happened to disturb his hilarity. He said he had played a joke on his father, and he had been limping ever since. You see, I thought the old man was a little spry. You know, he, he is no spring chicken yourself, and those eyes are not what they used to be, yet he can see a pretty girl further than I can. The other day I wrote a note in a fine hand and addressed it to him, asking him to meet... One, on the corner of Wisconsin and Milwaukee Streets at 7.30 on Saturday evening, and signed the name of Daisy to it. At supper time, Pa, he was all shaved up, and had his hair plastered over the bald spot, and he got on some clean cuffs and said he was going to the consistory to initiate some candidates from the county, and he might not be in till late. He didn't eat much supper, and hurried off with my umbrella. I winked at Ma, but didn't say anything. At 7.30 I went downtown, and he was standing there by the post office corner in a dark place. I went by him and said, Hello, Pa. What are you doing here? He said he was waiting for a man. I went down street, and pretty soon I went up on the other corner by Chapman's, and he was standing there. You see, he didn't know what corner Daisy was going to be on, and he had to cover all four corners. I saluted him and asked him if he hadn't found his man yet, and he said no, the man was a little late. It is a mean boy that won't speak to his pa when he sees him standing on a corner. I went up street and saw pa cross over by the drug store in a sort of a hurry, and I could see a girl going by with a waterproof on, but she skidded right along, and pa looked kind of solemn, the way he does when I ask him for new clothes. I turned and came back, and he was standing in the doorway, and I said, Pa, you will catch cold if you stand around waiting for a man. You go down to the consistory and let me lay for the man. Pa said, Never you mind. You go about your business, and I will attend to the man. Well, when a boy's pa tells him to never you mind and look spunky, my experience is that a boy wants to go right away from there, and I went down street. I thought I would cross over, go up the other side, and see how long he would stay. There was a girl or two going up ahead of me, and I see a man hurrying across the drugstore to Van Pelt's corner. It was Pa, and as the girls went along and never looked around, Pa looked mad and stepped into the doorway. It was about eight o'clock then, and Pa was tired, and I felt sorry for him, and I went up to him, and I asked him for a half, to, half a dollar to go to the academy. I never knew him to shell out so freely and so quickly. He gave me a dollar, and I told him I would go and get it changed and bring him back the half dollar, but he said I didn't need to mind the change. It is awful mean of a boy that had always been treated well to play it on his pa that way, and I felt ashamed. As I turned the corner and saw him standing there shivering, waiting for the man, my conscience troubled me, and I told a policeman to go and tell pa that Daisy had been suddenly taken with worms and would not be there that evening. I peeked around the corner, and pa and the policeman went off to get a drink. I was glad they did, because Pa needed it, after standing around so long. Well, when I went home, the joke was so good I told Ma about it, and she was mad. I guess she was mad at me for treating Pa that way. I heard Pa come home about 11 o'clock, and Ma was real kind to him. She told him to warm his feet, because they were just like chunks of ice. Then she asked him how many they initiated in the consistory, and he said six. 
and then she asked if they initiated Daisy in the consistory, and pretty soon I heard Pa snoring. In the morning, he took me into the basement and gave me the hardest talking to that I ever had with a bed slat. He said that he knew that I wrote that note all the time, and he thought he would pretend that he was looking for Daisy just to fool me. It didn't look reasonable that a man would catch epizootic and rheumatism just to fool his boy, does it? What did he give me the half dollar for? Ma and Pa don't seem to call each other pet anymore, and as for me, they both look at me as though I was a hard citizen. I'm going to Missouri to take Jesse James' place. There is no encouragement for a boy here. Well, good morning. If Pa comes in here asking for me, tell him that you saw an express wagon going to the morgue with the remains of a pretty boy who acted as though he died from concussion of a bed slat on the pistol pocket. That will make Pa feel sorry. Oh, he has got the awfulest cold, though. And the boy limped out to separate a couple of dogs that were fighting. Happy Father's Day, everybody.